Imagine being able to cure genetic diseases, improve crop yields, and even bring extinct species back to life. Sounds like science fiction, right? But what if I told you that this is a reality now, thanks to the revolutionary tool called CRISPR? You may have heard of this word before. I'd be surprised if you haven't. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, and it is a natural defense mechanism that is found in bacteria. Scientists have harnessed this mechanism to create a precise and efficient way of editing specific sections of DNA. Wait, does that mean that you can change the color of your hair or your eyes? This genome editing tool is raising so many controversial topics and conversations about what its specific use is and what it's good for. Some experts have described the pace of this progress in the field as explosive with new developments and applications being announced regularly. Because this technology is moving so fast, it is important that humans understand these types of technologies with their capabilities and their limitations. This technology has the potential to revolutionize many scientific fields, including medicine, agriculture, and basic research because of its low costs and easy but precise ability of use. So I wanna take a deeper dive into its actual capabilities versus the controversies that are surrounding this technology. The CRISPR genome consists of two main systems. There is the guide RNA along with the Cas9 protein. Imagine a genome as a book with each gene represented by a specific word or phrase. The CRISPR-Cas9 system acts like a pair of molecular scissors with the guide RNA acting like a set of instructions or GPS to guide the scissors to the specific word or phrase, or the gene in this case, that you would want to edit. The Cas9 is ready to cut the DNA, but the guide RNA is holding the Cas9 back from being inside of the genome until it finds the exact match it is looking for. This process is what defines the word CRISPR. It is a natural defense mechanism that is originally found in bacterial immune system. The guide RNA contains a 20 nucleotide or letter region that is complementary to the target sequence and will guide the Cas9 enzyme to the correct location in the genome. The good thing about this is it is very efficient to design and extremely cost effective to buy. The guide RNA is then synthesized and combined with the Cas9 enzyme to form the CRISPR-Cas9 complex, which will move along the genome until they find a spot where the guide RNA matches. Then it inserts itself in between the two strands of double helix, ripping them apart, which triggers the cut by the Cas9 protein. Now that the cell has a piece of DNA that's broken, the cell's natural repair mechanisms are then used to fix the cut. There are two main systems that are used for this repair. One of the main ways cells repair their cuts made by CRISPR-Cas9 is through the process called non-homologous end joining, or NHEJ. In NHEJ, the cell directly pushes the broken DNA ends back together, sometimes resulting in small insertions or deletions, which is known as indels at the cut site. These small indels can disrupt the function of a gene or cause a mutation, effectively knocking out the gene that's not an efficient way of genome editing. Another more efficient way the cell can repair the cut genome is through a process called homology directed repair, or HDR. In HDR, the cell uses a DNA template as a guide repairing the break. The template contains the desired genetic sequence that will be added to the genome at the cut site. This process can be used to add or delete specific sequences in the genome and is more efficient for returning the genome sequence back to the original state again. The reason why CRISPR is so special is because it allows scientists to make specific changes to the genome with greater ease, speed, and precision than ever before in the exact specific spot wanted. Let's take a deeper dive into the cost effectiveness on how it could be considered as cheap. It is cheap if you're doing basic research in a lab or you're someone who already owns a lab. The cost can also vary significantly depending on the specific application and the complexity that's behind the experiment. 
According to a 2020 Nature article, the cost of CRISPR gene editing regions has dropped more than 90% in the last five years. It is estimated that in 2020, the cost of gene editing regions, such as the Cas9 protein, is less than $100. And this cost is constantly decreasing as more and more research is being done, and more companies are jumping in to produce them. However, the cost of regions is only a small part of the total cost of CRISPR experiment. Other costs, such as equipment, specialized expertise, and regulatory approvals can also be made significant and the total cost can vary widely depending on the specific application. Also, the costs can be higher if you buy them from a larger company that already has rights on the technology. This means that buying from those companies can be a lot more expensive than buying from smaller suppliers. Secondly, there are potential malfunctions that could occur with its use. There are still a lot of things we don't know about cells. For example, why do cells do a certain repair pathway rather than others? What are the ways you can get into the system of a cell? If you're working in a lab with petri dishes, it's not difficult. However, when you're working on a whole organism, it can become very complex. There's also a blurriness of knowledge about how to make a particular thing happen by changing particular spots in the genome. For example, there is still a long time away before people can figure out how to put wings on a cat or an extra limb. However, this technology is being used by thousands of scientists who are doing really important research and work. For example, scientists are using CRISPR to develop crops that are resistant to pests and diseases, as well as to improve their yield and nutritional content. In medicine, researchers are also using CRISPR to study genetic diseases, such as sickle cell anemia, and cystic fibrosis, and to develop new therapies to help treat them. CRISPR is also being used to create animal models of human diseases, which can be used to study these diseases and test new therapies in the future. In biotechnology, CRISPR is being used to produce new drugs and enzymes, as well as create new biological sensors and diagnostic tools. These are the types of conversations that should be carried around CRISPR. There are a lot of scientists working with this technology with the support of the community around them. They are relying on us to promote more people in the industry to devote all their time to scientific research. We all have a responsibility to, to this technology, which is why it is so important for all of us and for you to learn about these types of technologies and how they can really be used, because that is the only way we will be able to navigate the development of those sorts of technologies to make sure there is a positive outcome in the end for the world and for us. Most importantly, it is so important to start introducing new fresh perspectives to the scientific field and getting the youth involved in learning about these topics and getting involved in scientific research. I personally designed and created a website linked here called Youth to Bio that enables Bay Area high school students to extend their bioscience interests beyond the classroom and gain access to additional educational resources by offering an easy to navigate collection of biotech focused research and hands on opportunities that are available through local universities and nonprofit organizations. Bookmark this as this platform will continue to grow in a variety of spectrums to help promote the youth and move them towards the future scientific careers and new opportunities. Thank you.